live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Monday, February 26th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful weekend. It was beautiful out there. Sure was, but today's one of the days where it's almost like uh, we skip a season. It's going to be very warm later today. Uh, you're not kidding. It, it was warm over the weekend. A lot of people were saying, yeah, it was nice, but it was a little toasty if you're outside for any length of time. Today we go even warmer. I want to show you the high temperatures today near 90 here in San Antonio. <laughs> Uh, it is still February, but uh, this can happen. 88 in Floresville, 90 in Pleasanton, 88 in Uvalde, 88 in Lakey. Some places could get into the low to mid 90s down here around Pearsall and Carrizo Springs. So yes, it is going to be a warm afternoon. Uh, it'll be warm again tomorrow, but we have a lot of changes in the forecast this week. There's gonna be a lot of ups and downs, so you'll want to stick with us uh, when it comes to that forecast. And as we go outside for you right now, we've got 57. Notice humidity is very high, and that is because we are starting to see some fog. Not a lot in this picture, but there are going to be some spots to see that. 55 New Braunfels, 57 in Seguin, 59 in Bernie right now, 51 in Kerrville. Uh, let me show you the satellite picture, and this shows us where our fog is pretty nicely. So this is San Antonio right here. These are high clouds coming through, but this blue color, that is your fog that's starting to spread a little bit closer to San Antonio, and I do think it probably makes it here next couple of hours. So we'll keep an eye on that and the visibility. And it is down in places like New Braunfels and uh, Gonzales, but not so bad yet here in San Antonio. Uh, yes, the heat next couple of days, then big changes by midweek, a cold front. We're going to talk all about it. We'll get you set for your work week coming up. But with this fog moving in, RJ, what are you thinking uh, for the morning commute? Any issues yet? Uh, not yet, Justin, uh, especially in terms of the fog. There are some other things that we're seeing pop up across the city right now. But we're taking a look behind me here, 37 and Loop 410. So this camera out there in the southeast side, specifically wanted to get this one up just to show you that uh, the fog is sort of creeping in this area. But again, traffic still moving pretty good in both directions here at 37, Loop 410 on the southeast side. And then the one thing that we are following right now 35 southbound at O'Connor. They are about to clear out this crash that was reported a little while ago. This is on the southbound lanes at O'Connor. Now there's still some ongoing construction taking place here from O'Connor all the way up to the Forum 1604 area. That's why you see some of these flashing lights in this area right there. As we take you outside to our maps, you see that traffic is not being affected right now by that crash there. But just keep that one in mind if you're about to head out next maybe 15 minutes or so on the northeast side. We had a stalled vehicle that has apparently been cleared out according to our maps here. Um, we had the icon there a little bit earlier. So this was on 35 southbound at New Braunfels Avenue, but it looks like we are good to go in that area there as well. So also we're, also, we're still just clearing out some ongoing construction projects. We mentioned the northeast side still have some ongoing construction there. 281 southbound at Wilderness Oak, still some ongoing construction there. And it looks like we have cleared out that uh, 1604 I-10 construction as well. So just kind of cleaning some things up from over the weekend. But we're going to talk a lot more about the northeast, northeast expansion and let you know what to look out for if you are headed out there during the overnight hours the rest of this week. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was killed late last night trying to cross a street on the northwest side. Police say around 11 p.m. the woman in her 40s was trying to cross the road at Babcock and Medical without the aid of a crosswalk. That's when police say the driver of a car says he didn't see her and crashed into her SAPD says the driver did stop and try to help. However, the woman was pronounced dead at the scene. This morning, an immigration attorney is warning his clients about the impact of a new law. Senate Bill 4 would allow state and local police to arrest people suspected of crossing the southern border. It's set to go into effect in nine days. Now, the attorney explains to Daniela Ibarra why he has that extreme stance. An Eagle Pass field once filled with people replaced by silver coils. The razor wire is a tool Governor Abbott credits with repelling record numbers of migrants. Now that we've taken control of this area, for the past three days, there's an average of only three people crossing illegally in this area. And on March 5th, Abbott hopes to add a new tool to his arsenal, Senate Bill 4. It makes illegally crossing the U.S.-Mexico border a misdemeanor. Under the law, Texas police have the power to arrest and deport undocumented immigrants. Every local police officer will be treated like an ICE officer and every state judge will be treated like an immigration judge. Immigration attorney Gerardo Menchaca believes it could lead to discrimination. Now, if you look like you might be an undocumented immigrant, whatever that means, right, because they look like everybody else, 
uh, if you look, happen to look like one, you might be forced to prove that you are not here without permission. Under federal law, migrants are entitled to seek asylum. Supporters of SB4 say migrants will still be able to from a Texas prison. Since SB4 was proposed, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar has reiterated he will not ask his deputies to make these calls and, quote, does not anticipate any changes. Still, Menchaca personally feels his advice isn't too extreme. So for any crime, you're telling your clients not to go to police. Yeah, the police is no go. Court is no go. If you're owed child support for your U.S. citizen child, don't go to court. That's pretty serious. It is very serious. It is creating a permanent underclass of people who are vulnerable to crime that may not access the police. A federal judge presided over a hearing on the bill earlier this month, and he expects to have a decision before it's set to go in effect. He does, though, expect it to be appealed and make it all the way to the Supreme Court. For GMSA, I'm Danielle Ibarra. That's some advice from larger organizations like the ACLU Texas, which is not telling people to avoid police, but to advise them to know their rights. If you want to learn more about those rights, find this story on KSAT.com. Also, we want you to know if you are a migrant in an abusive relationship, even if you do not go to police, you can always call Family Violence Prevention Services, which runs a shelter and provides all types of services. In your morning headlines, President Biden will convene with the top four congressional leaders at the White House this week to press lawmakers on passing an emergency aid package for Ukraine and Israel. The Republican-led House is under pressure by the president and others to pass the $95 billion national security package. That legislation cleared the Senate earlier this month, but Speaker Mike Johnson has been resistant to putting the aid bill up for a vote in the House. It's as the war enters its third year, Ukraine's president is vowing victory against Russia, even as Russian forces advance on the battlefield. U.S. believes Russia has lost over 300,000 troops. Social media companies are bracing for Supreme Court arguments today that could fundamentally alter the way they monitor their sites. Well, the justices will hear arguments today about whether two laws passed here in Texas and in Florida are constitutional. Texas law makes it illegal for tech companies to remove political content based on someone's viewpoint. The Florida law bans tech companies from suspending the accounts of political candidates. Supporters of these laws say social media platforms have been censoring users, especially those with conservative or religious views. Tech companies argue they have a right under the First Amendment to set their own standards. Just a few reminders now that early primary voting is underway in Texas. That early voting period will run through March 1st. Then Election Day is Tuesday the 5th. We have information on voting locations and a sample ballot available for you right now on KSAT.com. New overnight, ABC News reporting that Ron McDaniel will step down uh, from her post as the chair of the Republican National Committee on March 8th. This comes following a new setback for former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. After her loss in South Carolina's primary this weekend, she's now losing the support of a key financial donor. As ABC's Perry Russell reports, Haley's campaign is insisting they are not giving up the fight. This morning, a new challenge for Nikki Haley. After losing the primary in her home state of South Carolina to former President Trump, she's now losing a top donor. Americans for Prosperity in Action, an organization backed by billionaire Charles Koch, says it will no longer donate to Haley. A spokesperson saying, we don't believe any outside group can make a material difference to widen her path to victory. Donald Trump is telling you that you have to choose between whether we prevent war around the world or whether we secure our border. I promise you, our best days are yet to come. Haley is vowing to stay in the race, at least until Super Tuesday. In 10 days, 20 plus states and territories are gonna vote. Let them vote. America doesn't do coronations. As both candidates gear up for tomorrow's primary in the critical battleground state of Michigan, the Trump campaign is burning through cash. Year-end disclosures showing his political fundraising committee spent more than $50 million on legal fees related to the former president. But those legal troubles apparently not yet hurting Trump at the polls. 60% of Republicans surveyed in South Carolina say they believe Trump would still be fit to serve as president even if he's convicted of a crime. Meanwhile, Trump has stirred controversy after saying his legal troubles have earned him more support in the black community. We've all seen the mugshot and 
You know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts and they sell them for $19 a piece. Perry Russum, ABC News, Washington. The Spurs were 1 and 8 on last year's rodeo road trip. They entered their game against the Jazz 1 and 6 last night with just one more game left on the rodeo road trip this year. First quarter, Victor Winbenyama getting the block on John Collins is third of the quarter. Going back the up the way, the ball ends up with Devin Vassell who goes baseline for the dunk, his second of the game. Later on, Wimby to Jeremy Sohan who goes up for the dunk, but he gets denied by Taylor Hendricks. Ball ends up with Wagner alum Jordan Clarkson who nails the three ball. Spurs had eight turnovers in the quarter and were down by 17 at one point. Jazz were up 63-39 at the half. Third quarter after a loose ball, Spurs get control. Trey Jones hits a three-pointer and it's, and it's Trey Jones, another three-pointer. And then check out this block by Wimby. He has the ball behind the back dribble, tries it again, but loses the ball. Spurs maintain control, and by the end of the play, Devin Vassell tips in the ball after the three-point miss. Spurs cut down the lead to 15. Jazz were up 93-74 after three. Fourth quarter, best dunk of the night. Wemby taking it right to the basket. He had 22-10. and 10. Next is the Spurs on the run with the layup for Branham. Spurs cut the lead to nine, but that's as close as they got. Jordan Clarkson nails this corner three on the break. He had 22 points and 10 assists off the bench. And here is your final score. Spurs lose 128-109. San Antonio is 11 and 47 on the year and one and seven on the rodeo road trip. So tomorrow's Spurs in this rodeo road trip against the top team in the West, the Timberwolves. That starts at 630. Spurs come back home Thursday, 7.30, to take on Oklahoma City. And then Sunday, Spurs stay at Frost Bank Center and welcome the Pacers to town. No matter what, we always say, go, go Spurs, Spurs, go. go. <laughs> Time now, 5.12 and 59 degrees for now. Google Pay app is shutting down in the U.S. later this year. Up next, what that means for users. And protecting yourself while running. Up next, how safety experts are responding following the shocking death of a nursing student who was killed during her morning run. And let's look out there with live cam. Starting not too bad, 59 degrees, we can handle that, but get prepared for some heat today, even though we're still in February. We'll be right back. Welcome back, it's 515. The killing of a Georgia nursing student who was out for a run has put a spotlight on the dangers women face while running. ABC's Faith Abube has the details in today's GMA First Look. This is protecting her face. In this morning's GMA First Look, how to protect yourself while running. If you hit someone, you always hit the center. If you swing like this, it takes too long and it doesn't hurt. New concerns about women's safety after the shocking death of nursing student Lakin Riley, killed during her morning run on the University of Georgia's campus. And this morning, experts sharing tips with GMA. Make me take at least two steps back. Go. Huh. Yeah. Move your hips, smash the groin. Women sharing their concerns. As a woman, do you feel more vulnerable in certain situations? Yes, all the time. I feel vulnerable walking. I feel vulnerable even in the car. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on what you need to know to stay safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Faith Abube, ABC News, Los Angeles. And the time now is 516 and 59 degrees for now. Some flashing lights, 35 at O'Connor. What's up with that? We'll talk to RJ after the break. Marshall's buyers have a very particular set of skills. They can hunt down the latest trends. Double denim is back. So chic. And take quality very, very seriously. Ceramic. They're highly trained deal-making professionals who travel far and wide to hustle the best of the best for you. We get the deals. You get the good stuff. Marshalls. <laughs> sore throat got your tongue? Mucinex Instasoo Sore Throat Medicated Drops. Uniquely formulated for rapid relief that lasts and lasts. That's my baby! Get Mucinex Instasoo. It's comeback season. Back 
back-to-back Super Bowl champions. The Kansas City Chiefs have won the Super Bowl. And you can get your hands on the official trophy collection, including the Super Bowl t-shirt, hat, and celebration towel. Shop now and get a special offer at NFLShop.com. Good morning, Monday. Start off the work week, and it's right now 520. And it's flashing already, RJ. <laughs> yeah, already seeing some activity out there on the streets. Of course, there's a lot of construction going on, and uh, you will actually need your AC later on uh, today because it is supposed to get a little bit warm out there. But right now, currently looking at I-35 at O'Connor Road, we had a crash that was reported there a little bit earlier. This is also, uh, you know, causing some trouble because of some uh, ongoing construction in that area. We're going to talk about that here in just a bit as we take a look at our maps you do see that traffic is still moving through the area pretty well on the southbound lanes of 35 out of connor road but something we will continue to keep an eye on as we make our way through your monday morning let's take you all the way now to the south side i know that was kind of a that was a long trip there as we take a look here we had another crash this is just being reported right now by the san antonio fire department so not on the highway here 16 but uh, one of these important streets that we do usually get on to 16 here on the south side south of palo alto road we have a crash being reported at uh, South Southern Motor Street and Apple White Road. So keep this one in mind if you are about to head out right now on the uh, south side of town. And that's something we will continue to follow as we make our way through. This actually just popped up on our maps, too. So a little bit busier right now than uh, normal activity that we've seen. I'll check on this one here in just a bit. But we were talking a lot about construction. Want to let you know about these ongoing construction projects that are taking place. So we're going to be focusing on the northeast expansion. This is a pretty big project taking place here. And uh, fortunately, the work's going to be taking place place overnight so again from uh, starting actually last night through uh, this weekend through March 2nd the both lane, main lanes here three main lanes are going to be closed in both directions on 35 north and southbound all the way from Forum Parkway up to Roy Richard they're doing a lot of drainage work and bridge work in that area as we get closer to the intersection now, or the interchange excuse me we also have a pretty major closure here both again both directions here 35 1604 are going to be shut down here as they work on these projects overnight here a lot of bridge construction taking place there. You're going to detour IKEA RBFCU Parkway and you're also going to be detouring Pat Booker Road. So there's going to be a lot of signs out there kind of let you know about some of these closures that, again taking place tonight 9 p.m. through 5 a.m. through the rest of this weekend. So again it's been a very busy start to your Monday morning. Justin how are things looking out there right now? Uh, pretty quiet here in San Antonio. We don't have a lot of fog yet. I think we could get some a little bit later this morning. And if you don't care about anything I'm about to say just hear this. Uh, it is going to be an up and down week, so stay on your toes with these temperatures. We're going to be in the upper 80s today near 90. Really warm tomorrow. Temperatures drop Wednesday down to 62. We're all the way down to 52 on Thursday. Cloudy skies and a chance for rain, and then we're back near 80 by the weekend. So don't get caught off guard. It is going to be one of those uh, roller coaster type weeks. Uh, in, in late February here, 88 in Canyon Lake today, 87 in New Braunfels, 88 in Floresville, near 90 in some spots down to the south. We'll be near 90 here in San Antonio. It's another warm day uh, once we lose some of these clouds and fog this morning. So far, we haven't seen a lot, but I do think we'll see some here over the next hour or so. 57 here in San Antonio, northwesterly winds at 3 miles per hour. It's a pretty good setup for fog. We have the dew point temperature getting close and light winds. Uh, so let me show you the satellite picture, and this is a special satellite where we can kind of see the fog here at night, and it's this blue color. That is the fog. You see Bear County right there at San Antonio. It's trying to work a little bit closer. We're starting to see reduced visibilities roughly New Braunfels down towards the Pleasanton area and Floresville. That's where the fog's kind of kicking in. And uh, you see visibilities are still good here around San Antonio, but to get up to New Braunfels, it's down about a quarter of a mile, Gonzales, mile and a half. Uh, so again, we'll keep an eye on this uh, and see how that affects the morning commute. Meantime, if you missed the pollen count yesterday, man, it's a long list. Mold, ash, oak, mulberry, elm, hackberry. Oak is now showing up, so we're headed into oak season, but the tree pollens are kind of going crazy right now. So if that, uh, that's something that bothers you, know that uh, those will probably stick around this week too. Satellite and radar doesn't show a lot over Texas. We see some unsettled weather out west. And as we look at the uh, future cast going forward, I want to focus again on temperatures because we're in the 80s today and tomorrow, but this is the front that cools us down and it drives in some cooler air. 50s uh, for at least part of Wednesday 
and then it will be cool on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And then here comes an area of low pressure that moves in. So that'll keep things rather cloudy on Thursday and we could see a shower or two and that's why temperatures stay as cool as they do. Uh, that will be our next chance of rain, by the way, on Thursday, uh, about a 20% chance. We'll have another opportunity again on Sunday. Not big chances, uh, but there is at least a little bit of rain in the forecast. In the extended forecast, uh, we showed you those temperatures, a lot of ups and downs, but there are the rain chances with those 20% Thursday, as we said, we rebound a little bit by the weekend. Another front probably Sunday and the Monday of next week. Uh, so it is an active pattern. Uh, we just hope that we get some rain out of it. Well, thank you for that colorful graphic and put it in perspective with, you know, the, the oranges red for the hot and then yeah. we'll cool off with the green. And well, then <laughs> that's the thing that, you know, I, I will tell my kids, hey, you know, you're going to need a jacket on Wednesday and they'll still say, yes. but you didn't tell me it was going to be cold. Right. <laughs> It's, it's no you're really trying to get it out there. You're, you're covered for now. <laughs> and bring the point home. Now, it's safe to say you are going to have to mention this like 12 more times. I know. At least. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Thank yeah. you. 525, 59 degrees. Up next, we're going to show the new prototype laptop that has a see-through screen. 528, ABC's Andrew Dimmert has details about the Google Pay app shutting down in the U.S. later this year in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, say goodbye to Google Pay. The app is being shut down in the U.S. As of June, Pay users will have to switch to Google Wallet. Wallet now has five times as many users as Google Pay. The company says the upcoming move will simplify payment methods. Non-paying users can now make audio and video calls on X. Until now, the function had been limited to premium subscribers. Elon Musk recently said calling abilities would be expanded. Finally, a laptop we've never seen before, or in this case, seen through before. The see-through 17-inch screen is the main selling point of Lenovo's newest laptop. It also features a touch keyboard and a stylus to draw or navigate with. Lenovo says one use could be for architects using the see-through screen to design in a way that's more exacting. Right now, it's only a prototype, but with a screen like that, you'll have a clear advantage. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. That was too easy, Am Andrew. Yeah, yeah, it worked. It worked. 529, 59 degrees now. Well, cyclists across San Antonio are uniting in name of safety. Up next is to your effort to improve infrastructure. Good morning to you. It is Monday, February 26th. <laughs> Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. This sounded like the song almost. Yeah, good morning good to morning. you. Yeah, yeah. Good morning I to you. I just realized as I said it, yeah. But <laughs> refuse to sing because I know we want to keep viewers. Well, so many out there singing along with you. I'm Why are sure. you nodding? <laughs> what is this? I mean, he's in agreement. <laughs> Your voice is great, Mark. It really is. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. I, yeah, someone's singing along with you. Anyway. You have a wonderful voice. Thank you. Do. And you have a wonderful forecast. Yeah, we do. Uh, you know, it was a warm weekend. A lot of people were out and about. Temperatures made their way into the 80s. We're going to be there again today. Uh, we'll make it up to around 88 or so, if you can believe that. But we're going to start off with some fog first. So know that if you're heading out right now, the visibility is starting to come down, even in places around San Antonio. So this morning in the upper 50s with the fog, and then we break out in the sun by noontime, 80 degrees. Yep, we're all the way up to 88 today. It's not going to feel like February at all. Uh, this is more summer type uh, forecast. Uh, but the good news, if you don't like the heat, uh, know that we'll have some cooler weather by midweek. Uh, right now, we're in the upper 50s in most spots. Humidity levels are really high, which is not a surprise. We've got a pretty good setup for fog here. Light winds, dew point and temperature coming together pretty nicely. And I want to show you again, this is a satellite picture where we can kind of look at that fog, how it is advancing. Already starting to get some reports of fog even on the southeast side of San Antonio. So definitely starting to kick in here. Uh, and we'll continue to watch that fog as it advances a little bit closer to San Antonio. Gonzales and New Braunfels continue to be the problem spots uh, with visibility down about a quarter of a mile and then uh, one and a half miles there in Gonzales. Are you seeing any fog, RJ, on any of the trans guide shots at this hour? Look here, 37 and loop 410, as you mentioned it, it looks like they zoomed out a little bit. Remember, we had a closer look at some of the highway activity there, but you do see this layer of fog over the city of San Antonio or over the South Texas sort of area right now, especially there on the southeast side. 37 and loop 410, this is our camera out there, and we'll continue to check our cameras throughout the morning, give you more looks here, maybe uh, get a little bit closer up to the New Braunfels area, if that's possible. Check in with our folks over there at TransGuide. As far as closer to the city, you still found the latest here. We had a crash being reported earlier there, 35 southbound 
at O'Connor. So a little bit clearer look now. They sort of zoomed out a little bit, and you do see that this is affecting the exit ramp right there, 35 at O'Connor. So if you're headed in this area right now, keep this one in mind that the exit ramp right now is closed in this area, 35 southbound. As we take a look at some other incidents across the city, again, it's been a little bit busier start than what we see on a Monday morning. We do have a crash being reported, Loop 410 at Calibra Road, not causing any major traffic delays right now at the moment. And actually, I think this might be off of the highway and uh, right there right as you head on to 410 from Culebra, but that's something we'll continue to keep in mind. Also uh, off the highway here, we had a crash being reported a little bit earlier on South Southside Motor off of Highway 16, but it looks like our maps have updated this and we have cleared that out for now. So we've seen a lot of different things across the city. Of course, there's been some ongoing construction. For the most part, that has been cleared out, but still some delays in the Live Oak Forum Parkway area. So again, it's been a little bit busy to start. As we mentioned that the fog is something that we will continue you to keep an eye on Mark and Stephanie back to you guys. Thank you RJ this morning a missing girl has been found and two other wanted minors are now in jail. The latter two are accused of stealing a car then crashing into a San Antonio patrol vehicle. It's all happened last night on the inner west side. Officers got a call for that stolen car were able to track it down but after turning their lights and sirens on the stolen car took off. The boy and two girls inside the car eventually ran a stop sign colliding with another SAPD unit at the intersection of Delgado and Northwest 23rd. When police found them, they realized one of the girls had been reported missing. The driver, a young man, was charged with theft of a vehicle. It's unclear what charges the other girl will face, if any. Well, cyclists across San Antonio are calling for change. It's been about a week since the medical examiner identified 65 year old William Mize after he was hit and killed while riding his bike near San Antonio's missions. Our Avery Everett shows us how cyclists are pushing for more bike safety across San Antonio. It's a really powerful light that can light up just like a car headlight. Veronica Salas doesn't have much room to spare on her bike. This is just an extra light. She's put safety equipment on almost every piece. So that way they can see me from further away. And even though she's been cycling in this city for more than a decade, she says she's scared. It makes you very paranoid to get out on your bike and know that this person was killed right here and he never made it home. Just one week ago, 65 year old William Mize was biking down South Presa when he was hit and killed by a driver. It's very scary. Cyclists across San Antonio say they're heartbroken. So anytime there's a fatality, there's a, a shockwave that goes through the cycling community. And now they're calling on the city. There has to be change right now. Cyclists say drivers paying attention is their biggest concern. It is drivers. It's impatient drivers. It's drivers who are on their phones. It's obviously drunk drivers. And the combination of all of those three put together is what is killing us off. They're fighting for awareness and accountability and also infrastructure changes. So we're going under a little tunnel here. Salas says she's taking alternative routes. So that way you're not crossing a big busy intersection with no protected lights. And showing them to more people. Hi ladies. It's not an end-all be-all solution. At least try to make con eye contact with people who are on the trails. But she says she's doing what she can to keep the cycling community here safe. Now, both of those bikers did acknowledge that the city is working on its bike network plan. So remember, that's a two year effort that's supposed to improve bicycle safety and infrastructure across the city, but they really say it can't come soon enough. So to understand more of that program, we already have a story up on KSAT.com right now. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. In Washington, the Senate back in session today and representatives are due back Wednesday after a recess. Lawmakers are returning to do a high stakes to do list and parts of the federal government could shut down this week. And as CNN's Amy Kyler reports, the White House says Ukraine is so low on funding right now, it's running out of ammunition. Putin gains every day that Ukraine does not get the resources it needs. The White House says President Joe Biden is meeting with top congressional leaders in both parties tomorrow. The clock is ticking to avoid a partial government shutdown Friday. Biden also wants the House to pass a Senate bill that has $60 billion for Ukraine. Without it, some argue that millions of people have been killed, will be killed. President Zelensky's comment that Many people will die as a result of this delay in aid. We're already starting to see that along the front line. 
But House Speaker Mike Johnson is under pressure to block a vote on Ukraine aid. Former President Donald Trump says he opposes the funding, and GOP hardliners insist Democrats meet all their immigration demands first. Do you really want to forget the lessons of the Second World War? Despite Republican critics, the Senate bill appears to have enough bipartisan support to pass in the House. Now some Democrats are threatening to use a discharge petition to get it on the floor. That requires a majority, so they'd need a handful of Republicans willing to defy their own speaker and presidential frontrunner. That's a very bulky way to try to pass a bill. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 540, 59 degrees. A special program in our area is providing housing assistance to more than 62,000 people that need it the most. Up next, why the number of those needing help has gone up a lot over the past few years. Outside with live cam, been very mild around here for days, so you knew that we were, you know, still at the end of February, beginning of March, that there might be at least one more big dip in temperatures, and it's going to happen later this week. 543 on your Monday, Opportunity Home provides housing assistance to more than 62,000 children, adults and seniors in and around our community. Chief Operating Officer Brandy Pettis joined this weekend's leading SA segment. Brandy Pettis, the COO of Opportunity Home, joined us. We talked about a lot. Not only did we talk about the logistics, how you and your families can get involved in the program if you do need some help, but we also talked about the increased necessity, talking about the trend and how so many families in and around our area, they need help. She mentioned the wait list, 100,000 people. So the need for affordable housing has just over the last several years has just increased. Um, we actually saw our wait list for both our for our public housing communities um, increase substantially during COVID. And so at one time prior to COVID, we were about 30,000 families, which is was massive at that time. Now we're seeing the need. Of, it's closer to about 100,000 individuals waiting to receive assistance from our program. You watch the entire interview right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Of course, we have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So, guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. And time now, 545 and 59 degrees for now. The answer is yes. We are seeing fog now on several of our cameras here in the San Antonio region. We'll take a look at some of those cameras, get an update on those conditions. And uh, Justin's got a beautiful picture of some of the wildflowers now springing up across South Texas. 548 right now on your Monday morning and if you're about to head out right now, especially in the southeast side, we have got some uh, pretty heavy fog that's rolling into the area right now. So we've been looking at this camera here. This is our camera here at 37 at uh, US 181 Old Corpus Christi Highway and you can see here that we have got low visibility in this area right now. A lot of fog. Now traffic is getting through this area, but want to show you one other camera here. This is a little bit further south there at 37 at Bronig Lake and uh, you see that uh, basically we're just seeing headlights at this point and brake lights so uh, the traffic coming that was coming in our direction that southbound traffic right there you could see just in the distance and northbound traffic's going to be headed up in this direction here as we just saw from those brake lights a little bit earlier so a lot of fog that's rolling into our area at the moment right now just take a look at some of these cameras pretty pretty impressive stuff out there we do have a stalled vehicle being reported loop 410 eastbound at south End road speaking of the southeast side right now and you already see some delays up here at 37 and 410 but this is going to be right before you hit South Presa if you are headed in this direction on Loop 410 at South End Road. The other thing that we're following at the moment is a crash been reported on the west side. This is around the uh, north side activity complex, the Paul Taylor Fieldhouse. So right before you're going to get to uh, Ingram Park Mall or Ingram Road, this is on Loop 410 at Culebra Road out there on the west side. It looks like it's actually off the highway, so that's good news if you are headed out right now in that area. The rest of the city, everything's looking pretty good out there right now. Uh, not uh, we have cleared out that crash that was earlier there on 35 southbound at O'Connor. So biggest thing again that we're following. Justin's been talking about it all morning long. Heavy fog that we seem to get uh, seem to have rolling into this area here. And again, this is our southbound traffic coming in our direction. Northbound traffic is going in the opposite direction there. Wow, it's hard to see. Yeah, I got a couple of Facebook messages from folks uh, down there saying it's thick uh, going for a morning walk. There is quite a bit of fog starting to develop. As we look at the map here, it's down towards Stinson, as RJ was pointing out there around Bronick Lake, where we're seeing some of the thickest fog, at least here around San Antonio. Now, if you're watching from New Braunfels and Gonzales, 
Uh, the fog has been thick for a while now. Uh, starting to see visibility come down in Pleasanton, uh, Castroville. We haven't quite got the, uh, the thick fog yet here in uh, San Antonio proper, but it, I do think it'll move in and this could affect the morning commute. So just be careful. Of course, you know the drill. Uh, low beam headlights, all that fun stuff. You're going to be out and about this morning. All right, we are 42 days away from our total solar eclipse. Just six weeks. We're getting closer. Here's your fun fact for today. The longest length of totality will be over Nazas, Mexico, with a length of, length of 4 minutes and 28 seconds. That's pretty significant. Most total solar eclipse, you don't get that long with totality. But even here over uh, parts of the hill country, we'll have three to four minutes of totality, which is pretty incredible. But we're getting closer to that day, still counting down just six weeks away from the big event. I want to show you this beautiful picture here on KSAT uh, Connect. This is from Yvonne, uh, who sent in these pictures of the blue bonnets. There are some starting to show up, always a sign that spring is around the corner, right? And she puts, hopefully there are no more freezes. We don't have any in the forecast. It's not a guarantee, but it is uh, a warm forecast for the most part coming up with the exception of midweek. Temperatures will not get down to freezing, uh, but they will get cooler uh, by Wednesday and Thursday. Here's our forecast today, 7 a.m. 58 and foggy. By noontime, 80 partly cloudy in this afternoon, all the way up to 88. Yeah, really warm afternoon with southerly winds uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Right now we have 57 with northwesterly winds at 3. And you'll notice visibility is still fine in this shot at 410 and Interstate 10. Our rainfall for the year, uh, you know, we've been doing pretty good. We did good in January. February hasn't been as good to us. We've picked up about 87 hundredths of an inch. Uh, now we're below average for the month. We started off pretty well, uh, but we're not ending. Uh, on a great note, we do have some rain chances headed our way. That'll be uh, Wednesday and Thursday with that front, but it's not going to be a lot. Uh, I think the bigger story is going to be the cooler temperatures. So, yes, we're in the 80s tomorrow. Here comes that front, and uh, it does pack a punch. We'll be in the 50s. I think for the majority of Wednesday and probably on Thursday too, as a low pressure system moves towards us after that cool air moves in and that will bring some showers with it. So kind of a coolish, maybe a damp day on Thursday. So the rain chances 20% Thursday will have another chance on Sunday. Here it is laid out in the seven day forecast 87 tomorrow, 62 on Wednesday and windy and then 52 on Thursday. That's it. So it'll be back to jackets, maybe an umbrella, and then we rebound right back into the 70s by Friday and Saturday, and it will be a warm weekend. So some cool air sandwiched between some warmth there in the seven-day forecast. Yeah, warm weekend, but not like uh, today and tomorrow. No, yeah, today uh, we're, we're in range of a record. I don't think we get there, but we're within a couple of degrees of setting a record today. All right, we'll be prepared. Yep. Thank you, Justin. 553, about 60 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, three, four, eight. Fireball three. Daily four, three, seven, two, two. Fireball one. Cash five numbers, one, 10, 13, 22, 29. Lotto, Texas, eight, 25, 29, 47, 48, 53. And Powerball three, eight, 40, 53, 58. Powerball three, power play three. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, a new storm coming through the west right now, but that is going to eventually erupt into severe weather. And that is for Tuesday night. Look at that area. Damaging winds, a tornado threat, large parts of Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, and Missouri. I'll track that to the east as well. And then the promise and peril of AI. This morning, we are beginning a week-long look at the fast-changing technology, starting with a look at which jobs could be in danger and how to help AI-proof your career. You'll see it all on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, a state law that would allow police to arrest people suspected of illegal immigration goes into effect next week. Here, the warning a San Antonio attorney is giving migrants. And up next, the playoffs continue to roll on for high school basketball. We'll check out the team still battling to get to the state tournaments. And Transguide right now, we've got heavy fogs in some places like 37 down near Bronig Lake. As you take a live look at Transguide, we'll be back. You're watching GMSA. Rise and shine. Let's look out there with live cam this morning. 
Not that cold at all. We're at 59 degrees, we can handle that. Uh, but we are gonna warm up a lot today, so be prepared for that change. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. We hope you had an awesome weekend. Good morning, everybody. It's 6 a.m. on your Monday, February 26th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, this morning, maybe go ahead and go for uh, some cold coffee just to get prepared for what we're going to have later this afternoon. Iced coffee is popular. Uh, change is probably one of the words of the week in the weather department. Justin is in for Mike. Good morning. So Steph and I are excited about the warm weather today. I'm not sure that that really is the sentiment of most of San Antonio, though. We're still in <laughs> February. <laughs> Uh, and we are going to get a cool down by the middle part of the week, but you got to get through today and tomorrow because it is going to be awful warm. The other big story this morning is going to be the fog. We're starting to see that advance towards San Antonio. And uh, as uh, RJ will show you in just a second with some of the advanced guide shots, we're seeing that move in across southern parts of San Antonio. This is a satellite picture where we can kind of see the fog and low clouds, and it has been working its way towards San Antonio here last couple of hours. So visibility is down at Stinson. That's the one spot here in Bear County where we've seen that visibility really come down. New Braunfels has been dealing with fog for the better part of two hours, and Gonzales starting to see visibilities drop even more so there. Uh, so it's it's going to be, I think, San Antonio kind of points east where we see this, uh, but it could cause some issues for the morning commute. As we go outside for you right now, 410 and I-10, visibility is still good there. 58 at the airport, 55 in New Braunfels, 49 in Kerrville, a little cooler up in the hill country, and humidity levels just a little bit lower there. Your forecast today, hot, 88 here in San Antonio. I think we'll see some 90s on the map this afternoon. It will be very toasty. Uh, especially to get south and west of San Antonio, where we could see some mid 90s uh, this afternoon. Those changes this week, it's going to be a roller coaster ride. Uh, so you'll want to keep attuned to the forecast, and we're going to have more on that coming up. Let's get over to RJ now and look at some of that fog with those transguided shots. All right, yeah, we're going to tell you a story of fog here in three different shots. So we're taking a look here at 37 Loop 410. So this, of course, traffic still moving pretty good in this direction here, but you see this layer of fog in the uh, horizon there, 37 Loop 410. Let's get another shot here. This is going a little bit further southeast, and you see right there 37 at Bronig Lake, and, tr and you just see the amount of fog in this area is pretty significant here. This is southbound traffic coming through that you're seeing in our direction there with those headlights, brake lights indicate the northbound traffic, and we're seeing more people on the roads now starting our 6 o'clock hour, but again, it's been very, very busy and very foggy out there. As we take a look at 37 and Old Corpus Christi Highway, U.S. Highway uh, 181 there, traffic is still moving pretty good in both directions here, but again, a lot of fog starting to roll into the area, especially on the southeast side. Speaking of the southeast side, we have a stalled vehicle being reported, Loop 410 eastbound at Southton Road. This is going to be affecting our traffic that's actually going to be going up to 37 and 410, and also, that's going to be headed into the South Barasa direction right there. So Loop 410 eastbound Southton Road. Also want to let you know about another stalled vehicle. This is going to be on the west side affecting our traffic here on 90 westbound at 36th Street. Cause a little bit of delays right now, but not causing anything major or significant at the moment. Take a real quick look here at inbound and outbound traffic times. Really kind of biggest thing we're seeing right now, inbound traffic coming in from Lavernia, looking at about 40 minutes there. And uh, outbound, something that we're going to continue to keep an eye on. Floresville's actually gone up a little bit, I'm guessing that's because of the fog that we're seeing in that area there. 25 minutes if you are headed from a San Antonio area out to Floresville right now. 27 if you're headed out to Lavernia. So fog is going to be the big thing that we're going to follow throughout the rest of the hour. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was killed late last night while trying to cross a street on the northwest side. The woman in her 40s was trying to cross the road around 11 p.m. at Babcock and Medical without a, using a crosswalk. That's when police say the driver of a car told them he didn't see her and crashed into her. SAPD says that driver did stop and try to help. However, the woman died at the scene. In your morning headlines, President Biden will meet with the top four congressional leaders at the White House this week to press Congress on passing an emergency aid package for Ukraine and Israel. The Republican-led House is under pressure to pass the $95 billion national security package. That legislation cleared the Senate earlier this month, but Speaker Mike Johnson hasn't put the bill up for a vote in the House. As the war enters its third year, Ukraine's president is vowing victory against Russia, even as Russian forces advance on the battlefield. The U.S. believes Russia has lost over 300,000 troops. 
The Associated Press reports this morning that the Palestinian Authority's prime minister says he and his government are resigning. However, President Mahmoud Abbas must still decide whether he accept the prime minister and his government's resignation. The move signals a willingness by Western-backed Palestinian leadership to accept a shakeup that might usher in reform seen as necessary to revitalize the Palestinian Authority. The U.S. wants a reformed Palestinian Authority to govern Gaza once the war with Israel is finally over, whenever that happens. Happening today, the U.S. Supreme Court healed two cases that could determine the future of what we see on social media. As ABC's Derek Dennis tells us, the main issue is whether states can limit how tech companies remove content on their platforms, which some critics claim is censorship. This morning, a crucial question takes center stage at the Supreme Court. How far can the government go in regulating political content on social media? The justices will hear arguments today about whether two laws passed in Republican-run states are constitutional, one from Florida, the other from Texas. The Florida law bans tech companies from suspending the accounts of political candidates. The Texas law makes it illegal for tech companies to remove political content based on someone's viewpoint, even if it's hate speech. Supporters of these laws say social media platforms have been censoring users, especially those with conservative or religious views. But tech companies argue they have a right under the First Amendment to set their own standards to prevent misinformation. It's about government, in this case Republican government, forcing a private platform to say something it doesn't want to say. It will be like the government going into Chipotle and telling them that they have to serve hamburgers because people want hamburgers. Restaurants don't have an expressive right to exclude black people or Jewish people from their from their restaurants um, because they want to make a point. Similarly, the the platforms, which are which again are are the Supreme Court has called our, our public square, can't exclude people they don't like to make some obscure and not quite clear ex uh, expressive point. Both laws would allow tech companies to be sued for violations. The lawmakers in Florida and Texas say they're trying to regulate the business actions of tech companies, not their freedom of speech. This case could have far reaching implications from what you see about the presidential election to even how spam is regulated. The justices are expected to issue a ruling by the summer. Derek Dennis, ABC News. Right now it is 607. We have some late breaking news from our area. We're getting reports of a gas leak out in the shirts area. That's right, and we have Katrina Weber live out there on Brooks Avenue and Randolph Avenue. Katrina, can you give us the very latest? Sure, I was able to confirm with police that they have capped this gas leak. It was a pretty sizable one here in this neighborhood here in Shirts. So this is the corner of Brooks and Randolph, but we understand the problem was centered in an alley just down the street. Now, we have crews with Centerpoint Energy here who have been working. When we first arrived about 20 minutes ago or so, we could hear the hissing of gas coming out of the, out of the pipes, we assume, and uh, we could smell a very strong odor of gas in this area. But that has dissipated. We heard that hissing stop and the police officer who was here blocking the street did confirm that they were able to cap that leak. Uh, we have not been able to confirm with him what we have been hearing through social media, that there was a car involved that hit some gas meters in that alley and uh, caused this problem. And we also have read posts from people who live in this area on social media that they were told to stay in their homes and keep the windows closed. But I did try to confirm that with the police officer. He said he wasn't authorized to talk to us about any of that. So we don't know for sure if that is true. But there definitely was a gas leak here that seems to be under control now with Centerpoint Energy crews here trying to address the problem on a more permanent level uh, to fix the problem uh, and, and make sure that this doesn't happen again. No injuries reported as far as we know. Reporting live in shirts, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Right now, 609, 59 degrees. Still to come, the playoffs continue to roll on for high school basketball. We're going to check out the teams still battling to get the state tournament. And after the break, a solid performance on the road wasn't enough to help the Spurs get a win last night. We've got highlights from their game with Utah before tomorrow night's rodeo road trip finale. And looking out there with live cam, it's going to be an interesting weather week, uh, but right now not too bad, 59 degrees, and later today, very warm. Get prepared for that shorts and t-shirt weather once again. We'll be right back.